talk about IRS audits. Here are selection methods for those audits. Well, these audits are a way for the IRS to ensure that taxpayers are accurately reporting their income and deductions on their returns. Audits can be selected for a variety of reasons, and there are going to be different methods through which they may be conducted. We've got these different methods. First off, the IRS can use statistical models using advanced statistical algorithms to analyze returns and identify those that are most likely to contain errors or provide significant revenue if corrected. Obviously, the IRS is trying to get as much money as possible, so it doesn't make sense for them to probably audit someone who, at most, they might get $1,000 back from. Whereas if they audit a company that maybe they can get a million dollars from, that would probably feed into their statistical model. Other things where, and this is just, these are just things in passing you may have heard in terms of taxes. If you, as an individual, are taking deductions that are less common, like a home office deduction, well, with today, today's day and age, it's a lot more common, but statistically speaking, you know, meals, if you're taking a very high meals and entertainment deduction for your business, that could be a red flag. And the IRS says, oh yeah, well, is it, is it reasonable that this person with this simple business had this massive uh, deduction had all these legitimate meals and entertainment expenses. If not likely, then we'll go in, audit them, and catch them on all of those issues. These models compare taxpayer returns to industry standards and historical data. If you're familiar, you know, on our audit exam, we're dealing with analytical procedures, basically the same thing. I mean, again, like this is an audit. Like, you know, talking about the audit exam, there are a lot of sim similarities between an IRS audit and audit of financial statements for, for our audit exam. We've also got random selection, as mentioned. You could just put their uh, hand into a hat, pull out a number, pull out a name, and that is the IRS, that is the taxpayer return that gets audited. Prior year audit, if a taxpayer has been audited in the past and issues were identified, they may be more likely to be audited again. Makes sense if you've audited in the past and you've, they found a bunch of issues, they want to make sure, checking up, that you're not committing those issues again. Information return discrepancy, well, the, received by a third party. So when you get your W-4 from your, sorry, your W, I might have been saying W-4 this whole time, but when you get your W-2 from your employer, that is going to be sent to the IRS as well. There are a lot of forms where if you get a copy, the IRS gets a copy. If you get a form from your investment platform about dividend income, the IRS gets a copy. So if you, what you self-report does not match what the IRS got as their copy, well, that's going to be an issue. That's going to be, you know, think ding, 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 red flag. The IRS picks up on that and you're going to get penalized or audited because there is a discrepancy. Lastly, deductions exceed established norms, kind of uh, similar to what I, what I said before. If you claim deductions that are significantly higher than what is considered normal for their income level or occupation may raise some red flags and lead to an audit. So if what you are deducting is not in line with standards and there are and even with these tax, ta tax softwares, it'll actually tell you if what you're deducting is somewhat in line with industry standards. That being said, it's still up to you, I mean, to completely you know, make sure that you are uh, reporting everything reasonably and not going overboard. Let's talk about our primary types of audits. Well, we mentioned we had our correspondence audit, which was pretty, pretty light. It was, it's the most common type of audit where it's just back and forth, mailing, again, maybe it's on Zoom, typically arises from informational errors, mathematical errors, or matching issues. If the taxpayer provides the requested information or documentation, usually we've got no further issues. Next up, we have an office audit, which is in the middle. Field audit, we kind of mentioned as well before, but office audit in the middle. Less common than correspondence audits. Office audits take place at a local IRS audit. The taxpayer meets with an IRS agent to discuss specific issues and provide documentation. Office audits, these are going to be more complex and broader in scope than correspondence audits and are not used for simple matching issues that can be resolved with a correspondence audit, something you probably need to come in and really kind of just get more work going. Just put your uh, big box of receipts down on the table and go through them. Now, next, lastly, we've got a field audit, which is gonna be the most intensive. It is the least common type of IRS audit. Field audits are the most complex and broadest in scope. They occur at the taxpayer's home, office, or place of business, where an IRS agent conducts an in-depth examination of records and documentation. Now, like office audits, field audits are not used for simple matching issues that can be resolved with a correspondence audit. So make sure you know these types of audits. You should see them as questions on the exam. Come back up here because I just love going out of order, don't I? Typically, an audit of an individual tax return takes place within two years of the return being filed, but it can occur any time before the statute of limitations expires, meaning at what point they, they can't go back. Now, in reality, like, if you've com committed fraud, there's no statute of limitations for that. They can go through and, and catch you for it. 
But generally three years from the filing date, that's the statute of limitations. They can't come after you after three years. It, again, there are more complexities in real life with that, but for the purpose of the exam, just know that the statute of limitations is generally three years from the filing date. Now, once an audit is complete, we kind of mentioned this a little bit before, but to go more in depth, issues may be resolved in one of two ways. The agent accepts the taxpayer's report and no further action is required, which would be very nice if that was the case. Or the taxpayer makes necessary changes and signs Form 870. Don't really have to memorize that. Which waives the right to petition the courts regarding the audit findings. You're basically saying we accept the changes. We're not going to fight this at any point in the future. Now, if the issues remain unresolved, meaning you didn't choose one of these two, the taxpayer will receive a letter informing them that they have 30 days to appeal the decision and request an appeals conference. This is if you, no one accepts anything, right? There's still discrepancy. You can get that appeals conference. Fast track remediation, just something to know, is available for small businesses and self employed individuals with the goal of resolving the issue within 60 days. Once the taxpayer receives a 30 day letter from the IRS, they have either 30, they have 30 days to either request an administrative appeals conference or agree to the IRS proposed adjustments. So just make sure you're memorizing all of these 30 day letter, 60 day letter, all of these, just all of these uh, uh, amounts and these lengths of time. Make sure you are familiar. Hey there, are you ready to not only pass your CPA exams, but truly understand and enjoy the material while studying? I know it seems impossible, right? Especially to enjoy the material. We'll do it together. Tap into the power of cpa.examprep.ai, where we've got personalized quizzes, multiple choice questions, memorization guides, flashcards, simulations, all tailored to your learning. Our adaptive study planning puts you on the fastest path to success and lifts you back up if you fall behind. Avoid wasting your precious time and money attempting an exam with a low chance of passing because who wants that? We want to get you through this process as quick as possible. Our exam readiness prediction lets you walk in with confidence knowing that you're prepared for success on exam day. Thankfully, there's no payment method needed to get started. So why don't you come join us? Visit cpa.examprep.ai and let's achieve your exam success together.